Miller, my principal at Tupano, can this is Brenda Beal, who has been my savior for the last five years. Um, Brenda, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her because she has been here a very long time. It's all been great, right? Um, Brenda graduated from my, Mount Vernon High School, received a high school stenography degree from the Career Center. She worked at the Treasurer's Office from 1984 until 1990 in accounts receivable. Took a little break, came back in 1991 and worked as Columbia's secretary until 2013. At that point, she had been called on to not just be a secretary, but she also was kind of a part-time principal at times because we had a principal that had to be in two buildings, so he couldn't always be there, so Brenda was his right-hand person. Um, actually, by 2013, though, she was ready for a change, and she thought, why not go to that new building up um, down in the hollow? And, and she knew it was going to be a challenge, but she was ready for it. So she got here, and she helped us in 2013. Um, she's helped me through lots and lots of um, difficult times and fun times, and we've had a great time doing it. Um, she's worked hard to learn everything that makes a secretary great. She has... Um, not only been the acting principal, but she's been the school nurse, she's been the, um, the guidance counselor, she's been the social worker, she's been the person who we all go to um, when we need to have somebody to just give us some great advice. Um, Brenda has a wonderful heart. She's a kind-hearted person. She has, and I sometimes people don't realize that about her, she does things for children that, and for staff members that people don't even understand half of what she does, I know. But I know that she's always been, at times, she's been there. Um, if a student, you know, she would work with Beth Small, who I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, if somebody needed a lunch, Brenda was actually there and she was paying for the school lunch for those children. Didn't ever want anyone between Beth and Brenda. We always made sure the children were well fed at this school and were never embarrassed because they couldn't afford to have a school lunch. Um, one of the things about Brenda, I loved my first secretary when I was here, but Brenda knows everyone in this whole town. She knows everything about you. Every single thing you can think of, Brenda, if I need to know anything besides pamphlets, I would ask Brenda because they know everything. And because of that, she has great contacts and she's always watching out for people. She makes our place a better school because she cares about the children and she cares about all of us. Um, she wanted me to tell you she's been married 42 years. She has three wonderful girls. She has seven grandchildren. And when she retires, I know you're going to tell them this, but you told me this this morning and this is my punchline. When she retires, she's going to take a map. She's going to say a globe and a map and she's going to point her finger and she's going to say, I want to go there. And so she loves to travel. I hope that happens. We're looking forward to all kinds of postcards. So I want to say thank you to Brenda and for all everything you've done for us. Of the schools with the messiest fan base. 
So she plans accordingly on how many volunteers she needs based off of prior investments. And I believe she's even spoke to a coach or two before about their school's candidates and what they can do with that baby powder. <laughs> Everyone knows that she's an early riser first to school, lives on coffee, and if you ever want to plan something early in the morning, you have to clear it with Mary Jo first because she'll ruin it if you're planning something special. <laughs> Just because it's out of the norm, you know? Um, she's planned multiple trips to Italy and, and other places for students, given those, those world global opportunities. She still has one trip left yet for this school year. Um, likes to spend time with her family and friends, her husband, Bob, and dedicate to our school system as well. Um, all her children went through Mount Vernon, Rob, Matthew, Sarah, you know, and I think, I mean, I'm sure you're going to tell her about this, but it's, it's traveling, spending the time with another career, maybe. Yeah. But you know, you have to understand, Mary Jo and I have a very unique relationship. For the last four and a half years, you know, I would kind of be her boss by day, then at night at Penny's we would flip roles.
and uh, dry at her age. If you want me to go get the trash, I will go get the trash. <laughs>
duty schedules, etc. If I'm honest, I have no idea how she accomplished everything. But her ability to multitask, plan, organize, and lead allowed the building to run effectively and allowed me to focus on teacher development and the overall big picture. The following are comments I made on Mrs. Miglin's evaluations throughout the years. The first evaluation I ever wrote about her said Mrs. Miglin is extremely knowledgeable regarding special education and scheduling. She is professional, hardworking, and honest. I do not view her as the assistant principal, but as the co-principal of Mount Vernon Middle School. And Mount Vernon Middle School is a better place because she chose to accept the challenge of her new position. Aren't you so glad you did that? <laughs> in 2014-15, in her evaluation, I wrote, Mrs. Miglin is the glue that holds Mount Vernon Middle School together. She is by far the most knowledgeable person in the building regarding special education, testing, scheduling, and a myriad of other areas. In her 15-16 evaluation, I wrote, Mrs. Miglin is masterful at breaking the mold of, quote, this is how we have always done it, end quote. She is never satisfied with the status quo. Mrs. Miglin does a tremendous job offering support to teachers regarding effective instructional practices. She has been a unified arts teacher, a special education teacher, and guidance counselor. These experiences have allowed her to glean countless strategies to engage and meet the needs of all students. I finished that evaluation by writing, I could not have asked for a more knowledgeable, hardworking, and professional assistant principal. As I write this, I'm struck by how much I still need to learn from Mrs. Midland. I could read a synopsis of every evaluation I've ever written of her, but they would all sound exactly the same. Every minute of every day of every year, her work ethic never wavered, and she continued to impress me with how much she knew about students in the field of education. Professionally, Mrs. Miglin became my sounding board for all major decisions regarding Mount Vernon Middle School. I could hear the opinion of 50 educators, but I wasn't moving forward with major changes until I spoke to Sherry. In addition to the qualities I've already stated, she is level-headed and someone who is able to anticipate the response of all parties before a change is even implemented. She could predict what was going to happen from A to B to C all the way to Z while I was still thinking about B. If you can't tell, I'm very impressed by Mrs. Miglin, the professional educator, yet I'm even more impressed with her as a person. Sherry is caring, loyal, generous, and kind. Sherry and Dave have raised four great kids while Mrs. Miglin simultaneously worked through an unmatched career. How she worked so hard at being a mom and being an educator, I will never know. Raising four college graduates, while working long hours cannot be easy. Just think, Mrs. Miglin, six years ago, about this time, our collaboration began as I spent the ride to Cedar Point convincing you to move from guidance to the assistant principal's job. You would probably like to punch me in the face for that right now. <laughs> on our way to ride roller coasters, you decided to go on a crazy ride of being an administrator, and you have done a fantastic job. The last thing I want to say is this. I've heard Sherry tell many stories about her mom how she worked long hours and brought work home so she could get more done. She once told me her work ethic came from her mother. All I can say is Rosalie should be very proud of her youngest daughter. I will very much miss working with you. Congratulations and God bless you.
that she's faking you. Oh, no, come on. Let's do this together. Okay. Oh, I'd love to do this together. I know. I told him I would be the person next to him that I want to do.
almost 30 years. See, my notes are back there. She worked 23 years at Dan Emmett as the head cook. And then seven years ago, she also wanted to see what it was like at Twin Oak because she had heard what a great principal was here and what a great staff. <laughs> so she came to Twin Oak and we've had a great, we've had a great run for seven years. She has, um, she actually has a, a wonderful kitchen. I have grandchildren who can't stand eating, and not in this district, but in other school districts, can't stand the food in their cafeteria. But I can tell you, any child I ask at Twin Oak, they love the food at Twin Oak. And that it is not that it's not food service, but it's you, that you helped us do that. Because when I have said, how come we don't have grilled cheese sandwiches anymore, or tomato soup, you would go running over to Nancy Bevan and you would make sure we got that. And when they wanted to cut things out, and I'd say, how come this is happening? You would, you would help us, and you'd make sure, because it's all about kids with that. I asked her, what are some of the changes she's noticed over the last few years, the last 29 years? And um, she said, in the beginning, she said, um, the food was really, really tasty. And she said, um, now, but it wasn't really very nutritious. It was filled with fat. They could give out little Debbie's. They could do all kinds of things. But she said, now we kind of went through this thing where it was really, it's a lot more nutritious. We don't have as many sweets. But you know what? The kids really still like it. She said she's amazed that they want to eat broccoli and spinach and salads. And, she, and they do. And, and they didn't used to. So they, I think our kids are really hungry. And I think that, I think Bev has known how to make sure that they always eat well. Between Brenda and Bev, we were always going to make sure that our children were fed. If they couldn't charge anymore, she would she would make sure that we all knew about it. We'd figure out a way so that no child was ever hungry or was embarrassed in our kitchen, which I think is a really big deal. I think it's important for our kids to know that we all care about them and we love they knew that. Um, she's seen a lot of different principles. She said in her years, she said that she's always um, she's always been amazed at the kids that come back and then she's known their parents because they were kids with her. So she said, so right now, I'm not going to tell them about what you are going to do in the future because I took that away from Brenda. <laughs> but um, I know you'll tell us. She has been a wonderful addition and I know that she has even gone out of her way to make sure that the person who replaces her will also be a wonderful addition because she has told her exactly what she needs to do in Twin Oak to continue her Yes, so we're really excited, but we're most, we're going to be really sad to see you go. You've been a wonderful person to work with. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Um, first off, I have to say that this woman, she does things that you guys have no idea she does. Yeah, I know, I'm not going to tell it all, but she's really, 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 really a good woman. And I'm, I'm really going to miss her. I'm going to miss the building. I'm going to miss all the kids. And Brenda. <laughs> yeah, Brenda. And just everybody. All the teachers here. Everybody's just so welcoming and loving. It's going to be hard to go. Um, but I've been married for 47 years. And with my kids, and then the grandkids, and fairs, and board fairs. Uh, you'll find me at the sheep barn, and the hog barn, and if you go over to Croton, you'll find me in the chicken barn with my granddaughter. Um, and then after they all go back to school, I think that we're gonna go on a trip, a train trip out west.
has been in education for 21 years, all of which have been with Mount Vernon City Schools. Bachelor's degree from Whitburg University, master's from Montana State University. Husband is Jim, we have two daughters, Tori and Sarah. Has taught science, but more specifically biology, biology two, environmental studies, and physical science. She also has been the head swim coach, the varsity swim coach for 16 years. Well, lots of state titles, awards, designations, servicing our students in that way. Most memorable to me are the organized trips that she organized as far as the Knights of the Wild. Ah, that's the idea, huh? Stone Laboratory at Put Bay. She's very passionate about the environment, having started our environmental club and being an advisor for that. I tried to find the past emails, but since we switched over email, I can't find them. You used to send me emails of, we took out 17 tires out of the Kokosi River, so many bags. I mean, a list of things. I'm like, how do they all get that stuff in there? <laughs> And why? And why? Yeah. But it was nothing for her to be compassionate about the environment that way, not only taking care of our community and she's doing that service learning for our students. Um, but she also doesn't have a problem with you're in the middle of conversation, she goes, Why would you do that to your body? Do you know what that does to you? Do you know what this? And you're like, oh, I never thought about that. So definitely to, you know, inquisitive that way. But I can't talk about Marcy without talking about Jasper. Jasper is the snake, the cornhole the corn snake that, that resides in her room. There's been some times where he's made his presence known, and I really don't know if Jasper's a female or male. I really don't know. It would be unpleasant to find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it um, but anyway, sometimes his eating habits have gone awry when it comes to a mouse in the elementary kids. <laughs> we'll get asked that one later. It's not appropriate to tell right now. <laughs> but there was a time that Jasper, don't know how, got loose. And you know, and as a principal in the building, you're like, okay, I know I need to go help. But if I find them, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone was a good supporter. No, they weren't. They weren't. Um, but eventually Jasper was found. And you know, and you're thinking about the science rooms that they're all connected to, so you don't know. You think he hasn't left her room. But maybe he has. So just keep that in mind. So that's, you know, that's why I remember is Jasper didn't. But Jasper was found, put back, everything's been good. But I do want to thank you for your service learning, your teaching of our students, and I believe, uh, I know you're probably going to talk more of this, but I think you have a, a trip for Oregon. Yes. Yeah. So yes, as well as Sasha. Where is Jasper going? Jasper has gone already. Okay. I have a student who has taken it. Yeah. <laughs> I promise he's not just <laughs> Once again, I've had two, two short years with Marcy, um, but in those two years, the, the one thing that I appreciate the most is that she's firm but fair, and I think that she has a genuine heart for kids. Um, you know, one thing that sticks out to me, I was in an evaluation um, observation for this year, and they were doing a lab, and I know that I'm going to mess up what the lab was, but she did, uh, she was sharing with the students about the ball eagle. And how did you see? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the effects that that had on the population and how you know she saw that population decline, but now being able to, to share with the kids how it has grown once again and just that strength. And I know that over the years that the education uh, can drain you, but I know too that it can empower you. And I know that I wish her the best. I'm jealous that she gets to go out west. Um, so I wish you the best on our journey, and I just want to thank you for your service to Mount Vernon High School and to the students and the staff. Thank you. Um, yes, so uh, in the near future, our plans are to uh, drive out to Oregon, and we'll be running a uh, home in the mountains, and we get to take our dogs, so lots of mountain hiking this uh, coming fall. And it has been my pleasure uh, to work at Mount Vernon High School with a lot of great kids. Five years ago when I got here, we started this thing called a summer scrapbook. get a sense for what people did over the summer. They would send me photos and, and 
I got to be honest, Marcy was one of those people I lived vicariously through all of her travels. I mean, I think, I, I mean, they've been incredible. And so I know you're going to enjoy that time traveling. And, uh, and on behalf of Mount Vernon City Schools, a small token of our appreciation. Thank you. And then, so as you look at the, uh, the remaining three names on the list, unfortunately, they weren't able to make it here tonight. Um, those who weren't able to make it, and especially these three here, um, have been a tremendous, tremendous asset to this district. Um, Janet was our school nurse, Rick was our school psychologist, and uh, Beth was one of our speech therapists. Um, I would probably be correct to say that uh, after talking to Rick, Rick doesn't like to be out in front too much. He likes to kind of stay behind the scenes, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say that uh, those are some big, big, big holes to fill in the district, and we certainly wish them uh, incredible successes. We do all of our uh, retirees. At this point in time, what we'll do is um, we're going to take about just about a, a 15 minute recess, and uh, we would have liked to invite everybody here to get a chance to maybe say a word or two uh, to our retirees. We have some cake and some fruit and some dip and some different things over here. Uh, we'll kind of let you know, we'll flash the lights in about 14 minutes to let you know we're heading back into our session, but uh, 